Hi everyone! So today we are going to be talking about emotional preservation and this is for the people who are looking for a doula or um, midwife, they are uh, looking for their chosen family, or they are trying to heal some childhood wounds. Maybe you are on your spiritual journey and you are looking to preserve your emotions to strengthen your spiritual practices. Um, maybe you are just looking to enforce some boundaries and you know some narcissists and you need to get out of that. This is for you. Today we are going to be talking about locating, clarifying, and enforcing. And we are also going to be le learning about how consistency in boundaries and maintaining these boundaries actually dismantles conflict and hostility in the world. If you're thinking this world is too aggressive and violent for that, when we are all naturally um, born to coerce and uh, violate each other, this um, hopefully will change your mind. Um, we hear a lot of talk about making sure that you are always setting boundaries, but what does that really mean for you in the long run? Does it mean isolation or does it mean preservation? Emotional preservation will actually enforce true boundaries and the end goal will be true respect. So I've pulled a card from my mother piece tarot deck and what came out was the devil in reverse. So according to this deck, let me just make sure I don't speak incorrectly. The devil represents when magical power becomes a temptation for personal gain, and that's when the devil has entered the picture. The pitfalls of egomania are bondage to physical cravings, addictions, negative habit patterns, ego tripping, and forgetfulness of spirit. I think that that will be the icing on the cake for this video. When we start talking about emotional preservation, um, we start talking about three things. Locating these boundaries, locating the emotional deprivation, we locate what is violating you, the reason for the boundary is located, then we clarified it to ourself um, and make a pact that we will no longer engage with what harms you, and then we um, clarify that with the community. So the people that you are always interacting with, perhaps even the people that are causing the emotional issues, um, meant to, you know, place boundaries against, and then we will be able to enforce these boundaries. You can locate your boundaries by acknowledging how am I violated? How am I being, um, treated what is putting me in deprivation? We move on to clarifying this boundary with ourself. We kind of did that a little bit with the locating, but it is more than just locating. It's more than just giving a name to the abuse. It is actually explaining to yourself and making a pact to yourself that I will no longer engage with what harms and deprives and violates me. Um, and this, and these, this language is so heavy and so important and so kind of um, like forceful because this needs to completely change your body. You need to see how this is the type of language you'd use um, for a sister, for a brother, for a friend, um, for a family member, um, uh, you know, blood family or not. Um, this is, if you are in the business or in the experience of this world as, of, as a protector in some way or a nurturer, this is how you would communicate with a person that you love about a situation or people that they keep interacting with um, that's actually harming them. So it's time to clarify these boundaries with yourself. Um, and then you can let others in the community know. You can let your confidants, you can let your teammates, you can let your friends and close people that don't interact with those that um, are the source of deprivation. So in my case, I let the closest people to my heart know what these boundaries are so that they can not only hold me accountable, but also hold themselves accountable. They can see in their lives what what is actually, um, who am I actually dealing with here? And do I involve um, my loved ones? Um, am I complacent in this? Does this bother me? Am I stuck in a cycle of abuse? So suddenly when you start to locate your own boundaries, you can help others kind of clarify um, their own lives and see 
more, again, clearly, what exactly they're doing and to help them live a more intentional life indirectly. So we've moved out of this um, martyr, I'm going to help everyone. Once we understand that these are non-negotiables for other people that we care about, we have to accept and mother and nurture ourselves to understand that this is a non-negotiable for ourselves as well. So you could fall flat, you could um, become complacent. It is the only thing that is consistent in this world is inconsistency. And in this in this time that you take to preserve your emotions and your energy, it really will start adding up. Uh, just, you know, all of your projects will start falling by the wayside. Your your body and your mind and your spirit will start just like crumbling. Um, and I mean it, I, I'm not trying to scare you. I am just trying to say, you know, this is, this is what happens when you allow a non-negotiable to become negotiable, um, especially when you've already addressed the issue and you keep letting it happen. You have to ask yourself, when is this nourishing me? When has this ever nourished me? And take that into consideration as well. And you also have to keep in mind, um, and this goes along with like that victim mentality, the martyr mentality, if you sit here and you think that putting yourself in constant deprivation is helping you in any way, you are hurting yourself. That you, there is nothing that you're learning in these situations that is giving you anything that you wouldn't have gotten if you were just happy. Um, I'm in a wonderful, happy, um, emotionally fulfilling, beautiful, and peaceful place in my relationships right now, um, especially my romantic one. And, um, you know, I, I'm learning more honestly uh, than I ever did in all of my other toxic experiences that I just continuously put myself through under the guise of, oh, well, this is helping my creativity, my po poetic, this is poetic muse or something like that. Um, at a point it starts actually, you know, you start actually going into decay. So then we move on to the enforcement of these boundaries, and that is comprised of action. So a lot of the time, because we are inundated with so much stimulation, we are not comprised of very much action. As of recently, I think, um, a lot of us are just kind of complacent in a state of lack, scarcity, um, paralyzation, anxiety, depression. Um, we're, you know, we're just stuck. Um, and so this idea of being completely action-based is um, almost kind of foreign. It'll probably help you to write them down. It'll probably help you to write down everything that bothers you to see if it's actually enough. Once you've seen it or um, think it, you speak it. And if it doesn't sound healthy, you probably should start locating that boundary. So once you have located and clarified these boundaries, you can start um, the action, the enforcement of these boundaries. The only consistency you can cultivate is the belief in you and the honor that you have for yourself. The only way that you can convince others to believe in themselves and respect themselves is to apply consistency to your own beliefs. So if you're all wishy-washy walking around acting like you don't really care about what, you know, you said you cared about last night, then nobody around you is going to believe you or pick up on that um, emotional um, experience that you had last night. Um, some people will, don't get me wrong, but there are people that you do need to enforce those boundaries with that need to see the consistency or else they don't see anything. All they see is you being wishy-washy. So neither myself or anyone else has the opportunity to believe in or honor my boundaries as long as I'm more concerned about negotiating these boundaries and worried about the pleasing or comfort of others and seeming normal. What is normal? What is good? What is bad? Um, we, we, we all have pretty shady um, codes of ethics and morality here. We're all pretty much subjective moralists around here. So uh, it's probably best to start applying the ideas of consent 
and boundaries and emotional preservation in your life so that you can see what is good and what is bad. Um, most of the time we just sit in a state of vegetation and we don't, we don't say yes, we don't say no, we just think, who maybe I'll go into that little coral reef and of a person and I'll, let's see if I can stand up. Um, so anyway, you'll you'll start asking people to pardon concerns for others um, once you start like once you start that inconsistency in your beliefs. So it actually starts hurting the rest of the world once you know this and once you've located these boundaries and you've clarified them to yourself and you can't enforce them, you actually start doing more harm. So it's probably, you know, in your best interest to as soon as you've clarified them to start enforcing them. And if you fail, you need to be honest with yourself when you've done that because if we get into because we get into cycles of, you know, kind of like repetition. So when we're starting this journey, this path of emotional preservation, we start wondering where we can cheat, where we can go around and see new scenery and maybe end up at the same place. And we really never will as long as we don't know the way inherently. So we need to start learning about how these boundaries and how they're enforced can change our lives as well as how it can change others' lives. If we're not in the business of changing our life, we are in the state of that reverse devil. We are feeling that unconscious, egotistical tyranny that comes with power trips. Um, and boundaries can be seen as a power trip, um, especially to people that don't actually respect you. And it's easy to get wrapped up in that narrative as well. We are very, 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 I think, sentimental and soft people and beings and we walk around and we don't we act hard but we don't actually realize how soft we are so to remind you about that reverse devil when magical power becomes a temptation for personal gain the devil has entered the picture the pitfalls of egomania are bondage to physical cravings addictions negative habit patterns ego tripping and forgetfulness of spirit when we think about this we can only see, oh, the power for ourselves. We can see that, oh, I can change my life. I can isolate myself from everybody ever that's ever hurt me ever and live a better life. Um, and I guess I could see how boundaries could, you know, promise the a safety of isolation. And I can't, I can't lie. I've always felt that um, that would be best for me um, is to be isolated. Um, but I also think that that is that negative cycle of thought and belief that I adopted in toxic relationships, especially romantic ones, um, when they try to get you alone and make you believe everything they think and nothing else matters. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, we are our own people and we also have the power to change everybody's life. Um, and that includes our own. So when we start enforcing these boundaries, we can't start imagining how great our life is going to be without the consideration of others. Next is the goal. We need to assess the goal of this entire experience, um, which is to be respected, to be honored, to be, um, to be loved, and to love and respect um, others. So with consistency, we nurture belief and we cultivate belief amongst others to believe in themselves as well as our own belief in our own needs. And then we can grasp mutual respect for the earth, for each other, for animals, for everything um, before and after us. So when we start enacting emotional preservation, we are dismantling conflict and hostility. So this whole, oh, he doesn't respect me, I'm gonna have to scream at him. Oh, she doesn't respect me, I'm gonna have to hit her. I'm gonna have to hit him. Um, it, it doesn't exist. Um, when people don't respect you, you, you walk away, <laughs> especially if they're a stranger. Um, <laughs> that should just be basic knowledge. We shouldn't be trying to constantly be engaged in warfare with each other. Um, and at the end of the day, um, you can go a long way by locating these boundaries um, and even not saying a word if this person is never going to understand if this person if this person isn't going to 
try to cultivate a relationship with you after you've assessed and verbally, concisely, clearly, lovingly discussed these ideas, you can walk away. You don't actually have to cultivate relationships with people that you have made boundaries with. You don't have to interact with these people. What you can do is plant the seed, and that is what emotional preservation is doing, is planting more seeds. How many more seeds of growth, love, and respect can we plant? So with these consistencies of boundaries, we can have consistency of principle, and these natural principles of respect and consent are inherent in this universe. And once we start acting like it, it will m become more apparent. So I know we live in a world and a time right now where nothing but violence and propaganda and illusion is all that we see and all that we can, um, all that we can preserve in this world. Um, but when it comes down to it, when you're laying on the couch at the end of the day and you're feeling anxious and like you, all you want to do is go to sleep, maybe you need to think about the ways that you dismantled your own principles and your own boundaries. And maybe you need to start locating what has put you into depriva de deprivation, whether it's caused by you or others. And you need to start thinking about how you can make it better for yourself. So I thought I'd end this video with one of my poems. Quiet is the witch's voice in the face of danger. Her mind races into forests of pine and crows, retreating to a home of art. If her existence was meant to physically represent damselity, would her energy penetrate as clearly to the flowers as the signals to deaf ears? I hope this inspires you on your journey to emotional preservation and dismantling hostility and conflict in this world and in yours. I hope you all have a beautiful rest of your day and I will see you later. Peace.